Well, taxes, taxes, taxes. We all pay them in one way or another, but some of us pay more than others. Rich Women. people. Oh, oh, uh, Arendi St. Clair, everybody. Um, Aurelia St. Clair, uh, uh, did you say women? Because uh, I, I was about to actually launch into something, you know, about the unfair tax burden placed on wealthy Australians, leading to some rousing endorsement of the Liberal Party's new tax reforms. Um, no, no, today we'll be talking about the 12 million women affected by unfair taxes in this country. Oh, I must have missed that new woman tax being proposed in the budget. <laughs> it's called the pink tax, Pat. There's an average markup of 15% on razors, deodorant, soap, earplugs, and even stool softener marketed to women. That's outrageous. See, I just buy bulk, so you know, I often get discounts on stool softener anyway. But um, <laughs> why is this happening? Because women are often the primary grocery shoppers. Marketers appeal to us by designing prettier packaging, which is usually the same packaging, but in pink. Oh, see, that does sound prettier. I mean, concerning, concerning. <laughs> Very. And worse, sanitary items like pads and tampons are also subject to 10% GST. And sometimes the packaging is pink as well. Double tax. <laughs> Meanwhile, Viagra is sold GST free. India made headlines last week for scrapping taxes on feminine hygiene products joining Nicaragua, Jamaica, Kenya, Lebanon and Canada in no longer considering having a period to be a luxury. So then surely Australia is keen to catch up then with these progressive countries. Look, while I salute these countries for removing taxes on tampons, I don't think it will be necessary for Australia to join them. Sorry, are you saying that Australia shouldn't scrap the tampon tax? Correct. Australians have been campaigning for a change to these taxes for years, and nothing has come of it. That's why I changed my approach. Why make things easier for women when you could simply make things harder for men? <laughs> I suggest a new tax for men. It's a win-win situation. We'll finally pay the same price for earplugs, and there's money in it for those big brands and the government too. So, Aurelia, am I getting this right? Are you suggesting a man tax? Think bigger, Pat. Much bigger. <laughs> Introducing the big dick energy tax. <laughs> hey man, women have been paying more for pink and frilly packaging for years. It's time for a big dick energy tax. Man up and pay your bloody share on deodorant, earplugs and stool softener. Anything that says chunky, tax. Anything that says extreme, tax. Man size, tax. Energy drink, tax. And you don't want to eat girl cereal. You want some bloody diamond plate metal designs on your breakfast. And you want some tax. If you want to pay more for some mad shit, cough up a Vin Diesel, tax. Burn, barbecue store, tax. Manchester United, merchandise, tax. Any fucking plastic shit with Deadpool on it. Tax, tax, tax. Big dick energy tax. Whip it out and pay up. <laughs> Thank you, Aurelia. Although I'm not sure if that cleared anything up for me. I mean, how does this proposed tax take into account the fact that, you know, I actually can't grow a moustache and um, prefer women's razors for their ergonomic handles? Yes, it is true that hashtag not all men have big dick energy, but let me ask you this. How many men do you think would reach for the non-big dick energy items in the supermarket aisle? Well, I mean, who's, who's to say? I mean, I, I certainly would, obviously. I'm, big I'm dick energy tax using toxic masculinity against itself. <laughs> that actually might work. Uh, Aurelia Sinclair, everybody. Yeah.